everyone, and welcome to the first episode of the Good and Bad Side of History. I'm your host, Tommy, and in today's episode, I'll be discussing San Jose, California's Forgotten Chinatowns, so let's dive into it. Normally, when pe- most people, including myself, think of Chinatown, we think of cities such as New York and San Francisco. With San Jose being the tech hotspot it is, some people often look past its history and forget why places such as San Jose have rich and diverse cultures. The six Chinatowns included the pre-1870 Chinatown, the 1870 Vine Street Chinatown, the Market Street Chinatown at Market and San Fernando, the Temporary Chinatown at San Fernando and Vine, the Hanlonville Chinatown at Fifth and Jackson, Woolen Mills Chinatown east of Guadalupe Creek. The Market Street Chinatown at Market and San Fernando was home to about at least 500 people with lots of homes and had well-established businesses such as a Chinese opera theater, several restaurants, dozens of stores, a roast pork furnace, a temple, and other essential businesses. San Jose sadly wasn't exempt from anti-Chinese activities that were sweeping the west coast during the time, many Chinese residents were often verbally abused and subjected to rock throwing. After earlier riots in other cities, the Chinese community in San Jose were reasonably scared of what could happen to them. In 1886, San Jose began its plan to modernize their downtown area, but at the time, it surrounded the Chinese community that was on the perimeter of the downtown area. Speeches were made calling for the removal of Chinatown, along with calls for local businesses to only hire white labor or face a boycott. Chinese made it clear that they didn't want to move, so local anti-Chinese forces took things into their own hands, and on the night of May 4th, 1887, a quick moving blaze destroyed most of San Jose's Chinatown. At the time, like many urban areas, were built almost entirely out of wooden structures. There were no reports of any deaths or serious injuries from the fire, but arson was widely suspected as the cause of multiple fires that broke out. The mayor of San Jose at the time of the fire was a man named Charles W. Brave Fongle. Two months prior, Mayor Brave Fongle ordered the elimination of Chinatown's ramshackle tenements and shacks, which harbored gambling, prostitution, lotteries, and opium traffic. According to a February 24, 1986 issue of the San Jose Mercury News, reported that the mayor referred to Chinatown as a tumor that the city needed to remove. The remains of the Market Street Chinatown laid buried under downtown San Jose for almost 100 years. During the construction of the Fairmont Hotel and the Silicon Valley Financial Center in 1986, Archaeologists discovered buried trash pits left from the Market Street Chinatown. The artifacts gave us a glimpse of what life was like there. The artifacts that were dug up were a rice bowl made out of a type of ceramic called porcelainous stoneware which was stronger than porcelain. The bowl symbolizes long life. A celadon, Chinese spoon used for soups, a stoneware jar that was used to store soy sauce, sugar, and even preserved duck eggs, a toothbrush, a Chinese medicine bottle made out of cinnabar, a ceramic peach ornament that was a symbol of good luck and long life, a porcelain doll that historian Connie Young Yu believes that a local German or English immigrant may have given the doll as a gift to a Chinese child, Cross-cultural connections like this weren't an uncommon thing in Market Street, Chinatown. During the 1800s, San Jose was home to many different people who immigrated from different countries. Chinese-American children in Market Street, Chinatown attended public schools with children from around the world, and people of all ethnic backgrounds visited Chinatown to shop, conduct business, and eat at Chinese restaurants. Following the May 4, 1887 arson fire, Chinatown had to relocate again, and this time it was divided up into two communities, one community being Hanlonville and the other community being Woolen Mills. Hanlonville was more family-oriented, whereas Woolen Mills was more for bachelors who were working at 
the San Jose Woolen Manufacturing Company. Woolen Mills was a well-planned and well-organized community with an elaborate design sewage and hydrant system. Research indicates Xing Xin, one of the most influential Chinese on the West Coast during the time, that he leased the land for Woolen Mills for 10 years. Woolen Mills had two Josh houses, basically were temples, a Chinese theater, the Garden City Cannery, a compound with Chinese quarters, and a cookhouse. Unfortunately, the Garden City Cannery closed after several years, which employed many Chinese. By 1901, most of the Wollin Mills residents had moved to Hainlinville, leaving empty buildings, which were destroyed by fire in 1902. Ten days after the May 4, 1887 arson fire, local Chinese merchants working with businessman John Hainlin made plans to construct a new Chinatown a few blocks away, which is now the location of San Jose's Japantown. John Hainlin was a German-American who came to San Jose as a farmer. He realized the hardship of establishing a community and raising a family in the United States. The Hainlins had lived in Ohio and Indiana for quite some time, where they were subjected to anti-German sentiments. So John Hainlin sympathized with the Chinese and believed that they deserved a community to help their population thrive. The new community, Hainlinville, was named after John Hainlin, who was the beneficiary. The community was almost entirely built with bricks. Its schools, shrines, stores, gambling houses allowed children to be raised with a traditional Chinese background within the walls of the newly built community. Halenville Chinatown survived an earthquake in 1906 and flourished until the 1930s. The Hainlin's bankruptcy during the Great Depression initiated the downfall of the Hainlinville Chinatown. The site of Hainlinville was converted into a storage yard, marking the end of the living legacy of San Jose's Chinatown. I hope you guys enjoyed that one like I did and learned something you didn't know before. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, uh, leave it in the comments below. Until we meet again, I'm your host Tommy. See you in the next video.